In looking at the major scale pattern, you may or may not have noticed, or perhaps you already read this in your text, that the major scale, scale degrees one through eight, if you really split it in half, you have a whole, whole half followed by another whole, whole half pattern. There's just a whole step that separates those in between. Basically what that's saying, this is a tetrachord. If you split this in half right here, these first four scale degrees, and let's say we're in C, that would be C, D, E, and F. These first four scale degrees make up what we call a tetrachord, which is the whole, whole half pattern. So we have the whole, whole half pattern between these notes, between C and D is the whole, between D and E is a whole, between E and F is a half. So this is the first half, because C through F is the first half of the scale. The last half of the scale is my G, A, B, and C, which is the exact same thing. We have another whole, whole half pattern between G and A is a whole, A and B is a whole, B and C is a whole. So C, D, E, and F make up one tetrachord. Then G, A, B, and C, those four letters make up the second tetrachord. In between these two tetrachords, between our F and G, I just have a whole step. So that's what a tetrachord is, really. Even if that makes no sense to you, just memorize. A tetrachord are the notes that make up the whole, whole half pattern. So that's what a tetrachord is. And that is one other way to just memorize the construction of the major scale. So you can either memorize, we walked home when we walked home, or you can just memorize tetrachord, another tetrachord, if that helps you out. All right, now we're gonna work on some more complicated major scales so that perhaps I can help you with building these more complicated major scales. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do one that has a whole bunch of flats in it. And I already know the answers, but we're gonna do it together and hopefully you'll be able to see what those answers are. So I'm gonna build my treble clef here and we're gonna do one that also starts already having a flat on it. So we're gonna build D flat. Now remember, my first note has to be the same as my ending note, but in between, we don't know what these middle notes are yet. We don't know if they're flat or, or sharp or whatever. So we're gonna go ahead and fill them in. D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And don't forget at the end to go ahead and put that flat in there. Because if you forget to put that flat there at the end, when you get to the end after you've built your scale, you're gonna think you did something wrong and really all you did was forget to put your flat at the beginning. Now, just a second ago, I said you don't know whether there's flats or sharps in there. And what I'm gonna tell you is you do actually. Any scale that is starting with a flat in it, if you already know it's a flat scale, it's only gonna have flats in it. It's not going to have any sharps in there. So keys that start with a flat, flatted note, are only gonna have flats in there. And the only other scale that has a flat in it is the one that we did in the other video, which was F. So F is sort of an anomaly and F has that one B flat in it. The flatted scales have flats in them. And then all the plain letter scales besides C, cause C has no flats or sharps, but D, E, G, A, B, all of those letters only have sharps in them. Just a little tip. And then the keys that start on a sharp, like F sharp and C sharp, those keys are only gonna have sharps in them. So you're not gonna see that mixture of sharps and flats. We're not gonna see a mixture of sharps and flats until we get to some of the more complicated minor scales next chapter. So just try to remember that. So anyway, here we've already done our first step. You, we knew what our key was, we wrote our letters down. Now who remembers what the next step was? What are we gonna do? And don't forget to do this on your homework papers we're going to draw the notes on the staff. Now, I'm gonna start, and you know what? I didn't give myself very much space. I'm gonna start on the D flat that's down here because then I'll be able to read my notes a little bit easier. So there's my D flat, E, F, G, A, B, C, D. And again, don't forget to put the flat on there already. Next step, remember I asked you to label the pattern of half and whole steps. So in between your D and E, and really my, my D should look better than that. So don't turn something like that in. <sighs> okay, not that either. <laughs> so let's put my D here 
and I'm going to write my D underneath that D. So I know that that note right there is my D. Mine looked a little funky. So let's go ahead and label, we walked home when we walked home. Now from there, all that we need to do, using our keyboard or using your keyboard at home, we're going to look at that half step pattern and we're going to add in any flats that we might need to add in. So let's start on D flat. So we're going to start on that black key and we're going up a whole step. So from D flat, half, half, we're on a black key. So I already have to make a change. So what am I going to do to that E? Well, where is my finger? Am I on E what? I'm on E flat. Don't forget to put the flat here. Also put the flat behind the letter or after the letter. All right, now we're starting on E flat and we're going up a whole step. So we're going bloop, bloop, or we're going half, half, plain old F. No change, so nothing to do on plain old F. All right, from F, so here we are. We're going up a half step now. We're going up only to that one black key. So what am I gonna do to that G? I'm gonna flat it, so flat, flat. Don't, rem don't forget, write it before the note, after the letter. Now we're on G flat, I have to go up a whole step, half, half. So what am I on? I'm on A, flat. All right, now I'm on A flat. Don't forget where you're at. We need to go up a whole step. Bloop, bloop. What am I on? Hey, that one's written in there for us. I don't know if you can see that, but it says B flat. Okay, now we're on B flat and we have to go up a whole step. So we're on B flat. I'm going half, whole. Just imagine my little C right there. Maybe I'll draw him in and there's no black key in between there. There we go. So let's do that again. We're on B flat. We have to go up a whole step, half, half. I'm on plain old C, so I have nothing to do there. Now remember, when we get between seven and eight, if it's a half step, we did it right. So is it between C and D flat? Is that a half step? Yay, we did it right. If you had forgotten to write in that flat, you would have gotten to the end and you might have freaked out and you might have tried to do it all over again and then you would have kicked yourself because you would have remembered that you just forgot to write in that flat back there. Okay, so the key of D flat, oh, and look what I forgot to do. I forgot to rewrite in my flat up there, not good. The key of D flat has a D flat, an E flat, a D flat, an A flat, and a B flat. So if you're playing or singing in that key, you're gonna be playing or singing all of those notes as a flat key. This is just the general construction and you're learning how to build it. If you've ever looked at a piece of sheet music, you'll have noticed that at the beginning, you see the flats written in here at the beginning. And that we learn about later on when we talk about key signatures. But really what this is, is you're building and you're kind of finding what the key signature is. The key of D flat has all these flats in it and it would be written at the beginning of a piece of sheet music. It has a B flat, an E flat, an A flat, a D flat, and a G flat. This key of D flat has one, two, three, four, five flats. Gets written at the beginning of the music, and then the person who plays it just has to try to remember to play all of those things flat. And if I'm playing the piano in D flat, I might miss a few because I haven't played in that key too, too often. But again, even if you know your key signatures, even if you learned those in band or in choir, that's later on. I just wanted to show you that right now. You're still going to do it this way because that's what this chapter is about. You're still going to write in your letters. You're going to write in your whole and half steps. You're going to write in your flats on the staff as a scale would be written, both on the staff and on the letter part. Let's do one more complicated key. And then you can do the rest of your homework on your own including the fun extra credits that are kind of like hypothetical keys in a way. So let's do the key of E. And you might remember that I told you a little while ago that the key of E is one of those keys that only has sharps in it. Because I didn't say the key of E flat, I said the key of E. So the key of E only has sharps in it. So we already know that. And let's go ahead and start writing in our letters first. So E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E. Stop at that octave. Draw your notes on the staff. B, C, D, E. 
right in your hole and half steps, hole, hole, half, hole, 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 half. Or remember, it's also tetrachord, whole step tetrachord, if you want to think of it like that. So we're ready to get started. So let's start on our E and we're going to go up a whole step. So we're going to go half, half. So what am I on? I'm on F sharp. So we're going to draw in our sharp there, draw in our sharp there. Now we're starting on F sharp and I'm going up a what? A whole step. So I'm going bloop, bloop. I'm on a black key. So where am I? I'm on what? I'm on G sharp. Don't forget where you're at. We're on G sharp. We need to go up a half step. Yay, it's plain old A. I don't have to do anything to my A. So the key of E has a plain old A in it. So now from my A, I go up a whole step, half, half, plain old B. Yay, nothing to do on B, good old B. Okay, from B, we need to go up a whole step, half, uh-oh. I need another key on there. This is so professional. I love it. Okay, so let's do that again. We're on B and we're going up a whole step. Half, whole. So I'm on that crazy key I just drew in, which is a C sharp. Okay, let's restart back over here where they actually look like keys, although that's kind of pretty. Starting on C sharp, we're going up a whole step. So we're going half, half. So I'm on D. We're at the end. Let's check ourselves from D sharp to E. Is it a half step? Yay, we did it right. So the key of E has an F sharp, G sharp, C sharp, and D sharp in it. I hope that's pretty clear to you. Remember, as you're going through, make sure you're not flipping around your sharps and flats. Remember, if you're writing in the key of E, you're gonna write in all sharps. So we don't need to see any, instead of writing C sharp, writing a D flat. Keep your letters consecutive on the staff. So basically in the key of E, these are the notes that a composer would use. They would choose from these notes to write a song. Now is every song gonna look like this? No, these are in a row. This is just the scale. The scale sounds like the do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. In a song, a composer is gonna put these in a different order. They, they might start on E, but they could start on A. They're gonna mix them all around. They're gonna have different highs, different lows, different octaves. They're not even just gonna use this E. They could use this E. They could, if they're in bass clef, they could be using this E. They're gonna use them in different places. And then of course, these are all just whole notes. That'd be kind of a boring song. They're gonna use those rhythms that we learned in chapter two to use these notes with, with a different rhythm that they have composed and that's gonna create their song. You're gonna be writing a song pretty soon using a major scale, so I hope you've gotten a good idea of how to build a major scale and can get some ideas of a song of your own.